Your thoughts after the medal rounds? Well, as far as team race, you know, we're up there in the top five, and you know, really from second to about tenth is going to come down to the finals. So I think that's kind of what everybody thought it was going to be, and um, that's where it's at. Uh, you know, Evan Cross had a great tournament. Obviously, you know, went 0 and 2, and I think you see different levels when you get here and what you got to work on. Uh, but man, what a great, what a great freshman campaign for Evan. Um, you know. Um, uh, Anthony Ichimendia, you know, getting fifth in the nation after all he's been through. Um, you know, I got to bust some chops here in the Twitter world right now and tell everybody that thinks they know everything about his personal life to go get a life because, uh, uh, you know, go check the court records out if people are out there crucifying him on Twitter because you're talking about a quality number one uh, kid, that's it. You know, it's really frustrating in this world that we live in if you're a student athlete. And the better of a student athlete you are, the more uh, of a target you are. And it's, it's, it's not a fair world in that uh, these guys are guilty until proven innocent. So that's my rant on Anthony Ichimendi and what a class kid he is. And so for all those people out there that are uh, haters, you know, go check the, go check the court records before you, before you throw hate at a, at, a, at a college kid. I'm tired of uh, these college kids getting thrown under the bus uh, these student athletes and, and, and they're all automatically guilty of everything uh, and and then you get to the real facts and it gets to a court of law and you find out that it wasn't even the way it was said or presented um, so uh, you know everybody out there needs to let, let these kids be kids and let the let, let things play out sometimes uh, and, and I'm on this rant because of all the stuff he had to do to get back into you know he had to get a junior college degree he had to do a lot of academic things. Obviously, he had a legal issue that he had to get resolved, and that all takes time, and the patience the kid had to get back in there, because I'll tell you what, I, did, I made it hard on him to get back into Iowa State. I think everybody knows the history. He kind of started with us, he took off, and then he came back. Um, but that kid did everything we asked of him and more, and to see him get rewarded, you know, when he was this close to being in the finals, um, he's just a great story, and, and I'm so excited to have that kid. Uh, for Iowa State and uh, sit down and have a conversation with him if you really want to know what kind of character he's got. So that's my Anthony Ichimendia story right for, for you, gang, right there, all right? Um, and then Casey Swiderski, you know, uh, I think he's a crowd favorite uh, just because of his passion and his, and his heat uh, that he brings to wrestling. Obviously, he's got to get a lot better at wrestling. You know, we got guys like second-year guy, Frost is a second-year guy, Chittam's a second-year guy, Gaetan's a second-year guy. When I'm talking, some of them are freshmen, some of them are sophomores. Those guys are all I'm really proud of. Uh, they just got to get better wrestling, you know. So uh, that was our morning. You know, super excited. I think everybody saw what's going on with David Carr and uh, what he did last night. Uh, I think excited the wrestling world. And I know Dave is excited. He's got a tough competitor from Penn State. Um, and so we'll get ready to see and see where it falls tonight. Getting back to Anthony, he hasn't seen this family for like six years, I think, in person. How, how has he dealt with that? How do you help him deal with that? Well, I think FaceTime saves a lot of people in this day and age. Uh, so I know he spends a lot of time on his phone with his family, and he's very close with his family. And, you know, his, his father uh, and uh, my, our assistant coach, Coach Fernando Villascuse, uh, grew up. Uh, they were kids together. And so that relationship goes way, way back. So Fernando's been like a father figure ever since Anthony came over to the United States about four or five years ago. So uh, I know he keeps in close cut touch with them, and they're very close. He made a point about uh, Younger last night. The fact that maybe, did he break his finger or something going into the tournament? Yeah. He, that it really slowed him down a bit? Yeah, he broke his finger. It didn't slow him down a bit. You know, you got to overcome that. There's a lot of bumps and bruises and breaks and twists and stuff out there, you know. Younger just didn't have a good weekend, you know, and that's on Younger. He's got to figure that out. And, you get here and you have that experience, but uh, you know we just didn't get it done yesterday. And, and you know I'm not a, I'm not a sugar coat kind of guy, and you know he's got to figure that out, make adjustments. So when he gets back here one more time, he's ready to go. I'm not sure where the team race stands, but the second or the second place finish here do for you and for this program. It'd be great. You know it's just progress. It's progress. So you know we signed up for what we knew what we signed up for back six seven years ago, and so you know we keep climbing. We got a great fan base, and we got a young team. Um, you know Iowa State's a great place to be right now. Casey, I mean, the growth that he's made this year from the wrestle-off to now to where he had those frustrating matches that are that close and he could have, you yeah. know, like gotten there, but he doesn't. He stays controlled and he becomes an All-American. I mean, now that he's getting that control, what yeah, comes his, with his, next? Uh, his, you know, discipline and his containment of his anger has improved. 
I don't think we're ever going to get rid of it. But I think he sees that he wrestles better when he does flip out. And so, uh, you know, we got to keep that going. And should him, I mean, obviously it was a tough tournament for him, but he had some tough draws and the way these things go on. Obviously he's got all the tangle. I mean, what's the message to him? The message forward? to him is like a lot of those young guys. I mean, Cody's a great kid. He trains hard. He loves wrestling. He hates to lose, but he's got to get better wrestling. He's just not a good enough wrestler to get on the podium at this tournament yet. It's it's elite. It's elite to get on the podium here. You know, you throw in COVID, you throw in the handout medical red shirts like candy anymore. That's why we've got all these 25 and 26 year old people because um, it's just real easy to stay in college. So, I mean, to be an All-American is so much harder than it was ever five years ago. Um, so I just commend these kids for getting here. What do you think are the ways that you're preparing your, your younger guys to match up against some of these you know, super duper seniors, as I like to call them. Just, you know, it, it's just about getting in the practice room, and uh, you know, but we also do see some 18 and 19 year old kids doing fabulous things against 24 year old kids. So, uh, you know, the, the, to answer your question, these kids are so well developed from the time they're 15 to 18 when we get them in certain places, uh, certain clubs, uh, RTCs. That, that the skill level of these kids coming in is is why they're able to compete. It's just phenomenal, and it's impressive. Awesome. Uh, 